This is the End Time Hour with Jason Carter on Eternal Radio. Yesterday's prophecies, today's news. Hi friends, we have a bit of a different end time hour this week. I just want to share with you some thoughts about what I believe is currently happening in America and Europe. Now, since 2009, I've been warning people that trouble is coming. That is what I personally believe the Lord has called me to do. We all have a destiny, a calling put upon us, a reason for being on the planet. Mine is to warn people that trouble is coming so we can be prepared and not be taken off guard. That's why, friends, I talk a lot about the necessity for us to open the door of our heart to Jesus so he can commune with us. And it's also why I talk a lot about the need to get into and live in the secret place of the Most High. And that's the only place we can run to when all hell is breaking loose. And that's whether in our own personal lives or in the wider world with all of its turmoils. Now, if we don't know Christ experientially, then we won't know where to turn when everything goes belly up. And we'll turn to other things that simply cannot help us. Now, while the saints run into the rock of our salvation, Psalm 95, 1, the godless run to the rocks of their salvation. I was really amazed, friends, when the Holy Spirit revealed this to me. In Revelation chapter 6, we are told that the godless will run to bunkers carved out in the rocks. But when they realise that God's judgment is coming upon them, they call on the very rocks that were there to be their protection to fall on them and kill them. But of course, friends, there is no escape from the living God, whether dead or alive. Now it is interesting that the leaders and the wealthy elite will be in the number of those who run into these rocky hideouts. Let me just read from Revelation 6, 12 to 17 here so you can get a picture of it. I watched as the lamb broke the sixth seal and there was a great earthquake. The sun became as dark as black cloth and the moon became as red as blood. Then the stars of the sky fell to the earth like green figs falling from a tree shaken by a strong wind. The sky was rolled up like a scroll and all of the mountains and islands were moved from their places. Then everyone, the kings of the earth, that's the leaders, the rulers of the earth, the generals, that's the military, the wealthy, that's the global elite, the powerful, again, the global elite, and every slave and free person all hid themselves in the caves and among the rocks of the mountains. And they cried to the mountains and the rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of the one who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of their wrath has come and who is able to survive. Basically, friends, they ran into that hiding place in the vain hope that they could run away from all the doom that was coming upon them. When they realized that the wrath of God was coming, they knew that they could not even escape from the Lord. And so they call for those rocks, their hideout, their bunker to collapse upon them. Friends, today, the wealthy elite are building those bunkers in the Rocky Mountains. Now, here's just a few headlines for you. Doomsday inside the luxury bunker owned by millionaires that can survive a nuclear attack. The article says World War Three may look more likely than ever and with that comes a new doomsday. But these millionaires are prepared and always have a bunker designed to withstand almost anything. OK, how about this headline? The nuclear bunkers designed for luxury living. Or how about this one? Creepy billionaire disaster bunkers cropping up in New Zealand. Do you have one? And again, finally, what about this one? Why is the US military moving back into Stargate base deep under the Rocky Mountains a decade after it was abandoned? The bunker is built under 2,000 feet of the Rocky Mountains and is able to withstand a hit by a 30 megaton nuclear blast. 
Now, I don't know about you, friend, but I want to have my confidence in the Lord. I don't want to be shaken and behave like the godless, as though I don't have the Lord to turn to in times of trouble. And besides that, friends, I don't have the cash to build one of these bunkers to live in. Now, the Bible, friends, is becoming more and more relevant with each passing day. And this is why we as Christians should learn all about getting into God's bunker, getting into the rock of our salvation. Friends, who needs an earthly bunker when we have a heavenly one? Last week, I spoke about how Paul had learned the secret of living through hell and high water. He had basically learned how to live in the secret place, the rock of his salvation, his God bunker. Stephen, the first Christian martyr, saw his heavenly refuge, his bunker, so to speak, open up before him and welcome him in as his physical life on earth was being snuffed out. Friends, I pray that we will all learn this, how to daily get into our God bunker. Now, I do believe that the warning that Christ spoke to me back in 2009 and also previously in my vision experience back in 1991, that trouble was coming, is approaching. The world could be a safer place as populist leaders elected by and for the people rise to power and take back their nations and work alongside other nations. Now, the problem is, friends, this populism is by nature completely opposed to the current world order. And the global elite aren't just going to sit back and let their dream for global conquest vanish into the night. Populism has opened up a can of globalist worms. A battle is now beginning against the Antichrist system, whether we like it or not. Now, friends, earlier this week I recorded and shared on social media a few thoughts and prayers as I felt the Holy Spirit urging us to pray for America and Europe during this critical time. The first was a call, really, to pray for the Trump administration that it doesn't fall foul to the deception of the devil in this hour. And let me just say this, friends, we would be really foolish to think that as good as it is with what's happening in America at the moment, for those who support Trump anyway, that Trump is somehow immune to the wiles of the devil. And to suggest, friends, that he is not immune to the devil isn't to suggest we shouldn't trust him. We're all targets for the devil and he can pull any one of us away at any moment. Now, of course, the other thing to remember, friends, is that Trump won't do everything that we agree with. But so far, friends, I have to say, so good. I cannot see a single thing so far that Trump has done that is not a benefit to the American people. So much good is taking place with this Trump presidency. The problem is many people don't seem to know what good is anymore. And that, I believe, is a part of the problem. Everything has been turned on its head by the globalists and their ideology disseminated through the mainstream media. Darkness is now light and light is now darkness. It's a really crazy situation, friends. Christians have become the haters and the godless have become the lovers. But isn't this what Christ prophesied? He said, you would be hated and persecuted and imprisoned. And we can read that in Matthew 24. Persecution, friends, is inevitable for those who are true followers of Christ. For those who are not, they will find out at the point of persecution what way they will turn or who or what they will run to. And I pray, friends, as Jesus said in John 6, 39. And this is the will of God, that I should not lose even one of all all those he has given me, but that I should raise them up at the last day. Okay, friends, let's go to this first message I shared earlier this week on social media, and it's called A Vision of the Unseen Rulers in the Heavenly Places. Eternal Radio. Sounds to energise your faith. Hi there, friends. I have a vital message to share with you today that I just couldn't wait until the next end time hour to share it. I have been travailing over this for the last 24 hours. The world is getting more and more volatile and leaders promoted by the people around the world are stepping up to the plate to try and stop the madness. Globalism is and always will be a failed system. World empires always fall and this revived Roman Empire will also fall as prophesied by Daniel and John when Jesus finally returns and blows it all away in the wind. 
Now, today, we see it toppling. Globalism is in a precarious state as the peoples war against it and demand freedom from its enslaving power. Now, while God's providence is certainly here, and this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for us, the church, there is also a great darkness ascending and ready to tear the saints and the church apart, and anyone else who attempts to stem the flow of injustice perpetrated by the globalist ideology. The spiritual works of darkness are now in a heightened state of alert and they are flying about in vast numbers, having risen from the pit where they will one day be banished to forever. Last night before sleeping I found myself at war in my bed, wrestling in the spirit realm as my body became under attack from the forces that are trying to destroy what God is doing on the earth. I found myself hovering above the Oval Office and watching President Trump signing one executive order after another. I was literally paralysed in that position. I couldn't breathe and I couldn't move. I was being buffeted from left and right. A multitude of voices were hurling insults and accusations in my ears. They were voices both human and demonic, both from the church and the world. Eventually, I was freed and I fell asleep. Friends, the Apostle Paul tells us in Ephesians 6.12, that we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Friends, that means there are evil leaders in the unseen world, spiritual leaders of darkness, just like there are physical leaders here in the seen world. There are mighty evil powers in the heavenly realm, just like there are mighty powers here on the earth below. Now, in that unseen realm, friends, these mighty evil leaders of darkness are waging war for the hearts and the minds of everyone on the planet, and that's including me and you and the leaders of this world. Now, the global regime, including Obama and Hillary and others like George Soros and its liberal minions, have already succumbed to these evil, powerful leaders in the heavenly realm. There is, of course, salvation and deliverance open to all who will bow the knee while it's still day. Now, friends, we must pray and be on alert, lest we too fall into temptation and deception and get thrown off course. We must also, friends, pray for our leaders wherever they may be and whoever they are. 1 Timothy 2.2 2 says, Pray this way for kings and all who are in authority so that we can live peaceful and quiet lives marked by godliness and dignity. Friends, we pray for them so that we can live at peace in this world. At the moment, friends, it is teetering on the brink. The global elite, the mainstream media, Hollywood, many religious institutions and the conditioned masses are waging war against against populism. But now, friends, more than that, the devil and his demons are waging war against the people right now. And in actual fact, it is these spiritual forces of darkness who are behind the humans and agitating them to destroy this uprising of liberty upon the earth. This is a spiritual battle that could easily be lost if we don't get praying now. Now, friends, Trump, as the most powerful man in the world, is now a target for Satan and his most powerful spiritual leaders in the heavenly realm. And Satan is about to launch another violent offensive against him. Now, if we don't pray now, friends, Trump will fall. Trump will fall into deception and temptation. Remember, friends, Satan offered Jesus the world on a platter. This is exactly what the devil is offering to Trump right now. Can you feel the forces of darkness at work here? Now, of course, friends, Jesus was able to refuse that offer from Satan. But we must pray now, friends, that Trump will refuse that offer from Satan. So friends, let's intercede for Trump, but let's also intercede for ourselves and our fellow brothers and sisters across the earth, lest we too fall foul to the devil's evil schemes and come under his deception. Now friends, I've always said, haven't I, on end time hour when referring to Trump, let's not put our trust in princes, i.e. in Trump or in any other human being on the face of the earth who cannot save us. And we can read that in Psalm 146 verse 3. Peace friends and God bless you.
Eternal Radio. Sounds to energize your faith. I can hear the sound of nations rising up. We will not be overtaken. We will not be overcome. Music for your life with Eternal Radio. This is the End Time Hour with Jason Carter on Eternal Radio. Yesterday's prophecies, today's news. Friends, let's make no mistake, the devil is prowling around like a roaring lion, waiting to pick any one of us off. 1 Peter 5 tells us to be careful, to watch out for the attacks from Satan, who is our great enemy. It says he prowls around like a hungry, roaring lion, looking for some victim to tear apart. And then, friends, it tells us to stand firm when he attacks Trust the Lord, remembering that other Christians all around the world are going through these sufferings too. Friends, Satan is a schemer and you know that he's in a blind rage at what's taking place around the earth right now. 2 Corinthians 2, 11 says for us to not allow Satan to outwit us, for we are not unaware of his schemes. Problem is, friends, many Christians are actually unaware of his schemes. And that's why it's imperative, friends, to get close to Jesus where he dwells in the secret place of the Most High. God's holy bunker, friends. Now, just a little update of that urgent word I had for Donald Trump. I do believe that that immediate urgency has now passed, praise God. Many in the church are praying. Hallelujah. But let's not let our shield down for a single moment, friends. We must keep on praying for Trump as a serious battle is now waging against him and his administration. But friends, so too, a serious battle is raging against the saints of God at this time. Friends, it's one of the same battle that is happening on the earth right now. Because, friends, what it is, this is actually a battle against the Antichrist system. It's the Antichrist system battling and coming up against the church, coming up against the saints of God. Friends, so much prayer has gone up to heaven and God has heard the cries of the saints. And, and friends, believe me when I say that the devil is mad at this. The devil is mad and now we have a massive battle on our hands. Now friends, that's why we must put on the whole armour of God, not just a part of it, but all of it. It's imperative, friends. Friends, it would be really crazy, wouldn't it, if we were to just get out of the trench and walk right out into the middle of the battleground with those bombs and guns blazing against us without the necessary equipment or the armour to fend off those attacks and without the necessary equipment to push back the enemy into retreat. Now, the problem is, friends, many Christians, and I've been guilty of this in the past, get out of the trench without that armour on. In fact, friends, I think many of them get Get out of the trench even just with their pajamas on friends and then they wonder why all hell breaks loose against them now friends the apostle paul wrote this in ephesians 6 10 to 18 and it's a good reminder and i read some of it earlier in that word about donald trump and it says this and it's this is in the living bible and maybe it reads a little bit easier for us to understand and it says this i want to remind you that your strength must come from the lord's mighty power within you put on all of god's armor so that you will be able to stand safe against all the strategies and tricks of the devil friends he's got lots of strategies and he's got lots of tricks up his sleeve things that we don't understand and we don't expect are going to happen so we have to wise up friends we have to put on that armor and then it goes on and it says, for we are not fighting against people made of flesh and blood, as I said earlier, friends, but against persons without bodies. 
the evil rulers of the unseen world, those mighty satanic beings and great evil princes of darkness who rule this world, and against huge numbers of wicked spirits in the spirit world. And I tell you, friends, they are in a heightened state of alert at the moment. Do you remember, friends, when Jesus uh, went to the other side of the lake and the Gadarene came? And do you remember what the demon said? Have you come to torment us before um, the allotted time? And Jesus uh, cast out those that multitude of demons and, and they went headlong over the cliff. Uh, they went into those pigs and those pigs went headlong over the cliff into the water. Friends, I tell you, the spirit spirits of this age are absolutely desperate at the moment friends because they know their time is near and their torment is close and at hand and friends I tell you they will try and bring down any human being along with them as they go and that is why friends we need to keep ourselves with that armour of protection on and then it goes on in verse 13. So use every piece of God's armour to resist the enemy whenever he attacks. And when it is all over, i.e. when the battle is finished, you will be standing up. Friends, we won't be laying down on the floor, exhausted and battered by the devil. We'll be standing strong, friends. Now, it goes on in verse 14, but to do this, you will need the strong belt of truth and the breastplate of God's approval. Wear shoes that are able to speed you on as you preach the good news of peace with God. Friends, it's imperative that we continue to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ with peace. Hallelujah. That we don't get caught up in fighting against other people that have differing opinions. Friends, because there's a lot of opinions going on at the moment. There's a lot of hate. There's a lot of battle as the people war against Christianity. But friends, it's so important that we speak the peace and the love of Christ whenever possible. And then it goes on in verse 16. In every battle, you will need faith as your shield to stop the fiery arrows aimed at you by Satan. Friends, Satan is firing darts at us and he's aiming them at us every single moment of the day. Now, goes on in 17 and it says you will need the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God hallelujah verse 18 finally it says pray all the time ask God for anything in line with the Holy Spirit's wishes plead with him reminding him of your needs and keep praying earnestly for all Christians everywhere hallelujah Friends, it's so important that we have an understanding of this. A spiritual battle is raging for the hearts and the minds and the souls of the people of this earth. Friends, that spiritual battle is raging against Trump. It's raging against Pence. It's raging against the administration. It's raging against the church. It's raging against the true disciples of Jesus Christ in this hour. Friends, there are unseen rulers in the heavenlies waging war against us. It's not an imagined battle, friends. It's real. Now, back in 1991, I became caught up between the physical and spiritual realm. And it was here that I got to see firsthand the demonic realm at work and its engagement with the souls of mankind to establish its antichrist rule on the earth. I watched in the sky a battle between the hosts of heaven and the demonic realm clashing with swords, horses and chariots. I felt the tangible presence of evil and the Antichrist poised to enter the world stage. I saw, friends, democracy being destroyed. In fact, I was compelled in my spirit to symbolically act out this destruction and went into the family attic where my father had a print of the Magna Carta. I took it downstairs and burned it in the backyard. At the time, friends, I knew absolutely nothing about the globalist plan to destroy democracy, to destroy the nation state, to destroy our borders and to replace it with globalism. Friends, and then to install a dictator who will eventually be the Antichrist. Now, the spiritual realm and the spiritual personalities that have no physical body are real. 
Every now and again, friends, these demonic entities come against me. Recently, while asleep, I even got punched in my side by a spirit. I woke up with a jolt, like I'd been struck with electricity. I saw the demon immediately in my spirit, but felt its physical impact on my body. All day long, friends, I had a physical pain down my right side. And also, while writing my book, Trumpet Blast Warning, a spirit who took on the form of Adolf Hitler manifested right before my eyes in the middle of the night in crystal clear definition. The spirit of death surrounded me in the room. I rebuked it in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. And it vanished immediately. Now, friends, why do I mention all this? Certainly not to give any glory to Satan and his minions. I mention it, friends, to illustrate that there are indeed wicked rulers that the Bible talks about and they are real. And that's why, friends, we must stand our ground in this hour. That's why we must do all we can to flee from the pleasures of this world. Otherwise, we won't have a leg to stand on when Satan comes knocking. Friends, it's the pleasures of this life that disarm us. It's the pleasures and the cares of this world that leave us unprotected and susceptible to the devil. We can't put on the armour and be in the flesh at the same time. James tells us this in chapter 4. He says, as the scriptures say, God gives strength to the humble, but sets himself against the proud and the haughty. And it goes on in verse 7. So give yourselves humbly to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. And when you draw close to God, God will draw close to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and let your hearts be filled with God alone to make them pure and true to him. Let there be tears for the wrong things you have done. Notice, friends, we have authority to resist the devil and to see him flee from us when we have come to God in humility and a humble heart. James then goes on to share about how we are to draw close to God. And in doing this, God draws close to us. That's the secret place, my friends, and it's the only place. There's no good as hiding anywhere else because the devil will find us there in the darkness and draw us out and cause us to move even further away from the Lord Jesus Christ. Friends, I hope you can feel the battle that rages in this hour. It's going to cause the hearts of many to grow cold and it's going to cause many in the church to fall away. Even leaders who were once full of passion and zeal will fall by the wayside. But friends, let's be strong in this hour, knowing that the Lord is our strength and our defence and that he has become our salvation. Friends, he has become our salvation. We can read that in Psalm 118. Friends, we are not on our own in this hour. Remember that even when walking through the valley of the shadow of death, we won't be afraid, for he is close beside us, guarding us and guiding us all the way. It says, doesn't it, you provide delicious food for us in the presence of our enemies. You have welcomed us as your guest. Blessings overflow. Your goodness and unfailing kindness shall be with us all of our lives. And afterwards, I will live with you forever in your home. And we can read that, of course, in Psalm 23. Friends, it is better to dwell with the Lord. He takes away the sting of death and even sits us down to eat in peace while our enemies are waging war all around us. Praise God. So then, friends, let's stand firm in God's bunker, in the high tower, dwelling with the Lord Jesus Christ above the corruption of this world and the coming storm below. And let's not forget, friends, as John said, you have already won a victory over those Antichrist people because the spirit who lives in you is greater than the spirit who lives in this world. Hallelujah. Eternal Radio. Sounds to energise your faith. Music for your life with Eternal Radio. 
This is the End Time Hour with Jason Carter on Eternal Radio. Yesterday's prophecies, today's news. That was Paul Wilbur, the shadow of El Shaddai. Oh, friends, the Lord is with us, only that we would run into him at any and every opportunity. Friends, I get a real sense at this moment as I broadcast this message that many are feeling riled up by what's going on around the earth, by the injustice, the deceit and by the blatant lies and wickedness all around. But friends, the Lord declares his peace over you right now in Jesus mighty name Psalm 37 tells us the fate of the wicked and the destiny of the righteous hallelujah friends let's remember that good wins over evil that God wins over Satan hallelujah now I won't read all of the psalm just some parts of it but maybe friends you can take a Bible later and read the whole thing and let the word of the Lord permeate your your heart and your mind hallelujah now let's let's read it right now friends be patient and wait for the Lord to act don't be worried about those who prosper or those who succeed in their evil plans don't give in to worry or anger it only leads to trouble. Those who trust in the Lord will possess the land, but the wicked will be driven out. Soon the wicked will disappear. You may look for them, but you won't find them anywhere. But the humble will possess the land and enjoy prosperity and peace. The wicked plot against good people and glare at them with hate. But the Lord laughs at wicked people because he knows they will soon be destroyed. Let me just read that again, friends. The wicked plot against good people and glare at them with hate. We're seeing that all around us every day in the news and on social media. Friends, it's everywhere, isn't it? But this is what the Lord is doing, friends. He is laughing at wicked people because he knows they will soon be destroyed destroyed. The wicked draw their swords and bend their bows to kill the poor and needy, to slaughter those who do what is right. But they will be killed by their own swords and their bows will be smashed. Wicked people watch good people and try to kill them, but the Lord will not abandon them to their enemy's power or let them be condemned when they are on trial. The Lord saves the righteous and protects them in times of trouble. Hallelujah. He helps them and rescues them. He saves them from the wicked because they go to him for protection. Let's always go to him, friends. Let's always go to the Lord for protection. Hallelujah. Now, friends, I want to play the second recording that I made a few days ago and shared on social media. In it, it has some important points and a prayer that we can all pray. It's an urgent prayer, friends, for America and Europe. Now, of course, friends, do pray your own prayers in your prayer closet. We really, friends, we really need to get on our knees and cry out to the Lord in this hour. We need to seek the Lord and to cry out for our lands. And friends, we need to intercede on behalf of those who have been put in power to stem the tide of the Antichrist spirit rising in this hour. Hallelujah. Eternal Radio. Sounds to energise your faith. I have some more thoughts to share with you and also a prayer for the Trump administration. Now, no matter what side we're on, as believers, we are told in 1 Timothy 2.2 to pray for our leaders so we can live in peace. And if ever it was time to pray, it is now. Now, all night long, I've been dreaming about President Trump waking up in travail, praying and falling back to sleep again. Now, as I said yesterday, friends, Trump needs our prayers and not only that he won't fall into temptation, but also prayers for his life. 
I won't go into details, friends, but I believe the Holy Spirit would urgently call for us to pray too for Trump's protection. Some people have asked me, friends, how I could even support Trump, as if my support for him is at odds with my Christian faith in Christ. But to have an understanding of why I support Trump, we must first have an understanding of what globalism is. Now, I don't want to digress too much, as I want to get to the important prayer for Trump and the upheaval that's happening across the planet. But just to say, friends, I've been studying globalism for a number of years now, after the Lord woke me up in the night in a powerful encounter with him. Now, before this supernatural event, I had absolutely no idea about what globalism was or of the inroads it was making around the world. I was one of the dumbed down masses. Now, when I sat down to study globalism and research it with the aid of the Holy Spirit, I was shocked. I couldn't believe what the Lord was showing me. I was really in a state of shock, friends. Corrupt leaders engaging in absurd occult practices which made my stomach turn and clandestine meetings in order to overthrow nation states and unify the planet under a one world system. And then, friends, the penny dropped along with my chin. Globalism is the Antichrist system as prophesied in Scripture. It lines up precisely what the Bible predicted is coming to pass in our day. Everything, an anti-Christian dictatorship, a global monetary system and a one world religion. Now, for years, friends, we've been drip-fed globalism. We've been conditioned to reject nationalism. Nationalism is akin to Hitler and Nazi Germany, we are told. But let's not forget, friends, Hitler was a globalist, and let's make no mistake about it. Hitler's idea to conquer Europe is what we now have in the EU. The EU is a blueprint for global government. It's pretty much identical to Hitler's plan. Now, Hitler wanted to go further than Europe and conquer the world. Hitler was a globalist. Thankfully, friends, he was stopped in his quest for world domination. And now, friends, today fascism is on the rise and we can see its manifestation in those mind-controlled liberals who advocate an end to pretty much anything a sane person holds dear and demands through bullying and violence that everyone follow this globalist-fed ideology. An end to life for the unborn, an end to gender, when it's biologically staring us right in the face we are only male and female. An end to family, an end to marriage, an end to morals, an end to Christianity, an end to nation states, an end to democracy, an end to national borders. And friends, what a lie we have been fed here. Our borders are supposed to be secured. Trump's ruling is not because he's a racist. That's what the media propaganda would have us believe. It's about security. This is why Europe has such a problem with terrorists running amok with axes, trucks and bombs and why rapes and assaults have skyrocketed in Europe with this open door to migrants and open borders across Europe. And friends, that's not fear-mongering. That's from my own research. Meanwhile, friends, our leaders do absolutely nothing to protect us. Anyway, the list goes on and on and on. What these liberals are calling for is globalism. And now, friends, they are aligning themselves with Islam. They are kindred spirits. Both want world domination. So friends, that doesn't really cover everything about globalism, but just to say it's evil. And the Trump administration in taking back America for the people is undoing globalism by default. And that's why, friends, I support Trump. Now, as I've said many times on End Time Hour, friends, Trump could fail for whatever reason. And if we don't pray now, he could be either deceived or be simply taken out of the equation. So friends, shall we pray together? O oh Lord God of heaven and earth, we praise your glorious name. Today, Lord, we pray for President Donald J. Trump and his administration. Father, we pray for wisdom in this hour. We pray for discernment in this hour. We pray for restraint in this hour. And we pray for protection in this hour. Father, we pray for your holy angels to protect and keep Trump and Pence from physical harm. Father, we pray, Lord Jesus, that as the devil manifests, they will not be deceived. Lord, we beseech you today and we cry out to you for America and for the Church of Jesus Christ all across America. 
Lord, we cry out to you for those who have forsaken God, for those who are antichrist and are fueling violence and hatred. And Lord God, we cry out to you that you would open the eyes of Christians. And Lord, in Jesus' name, we rebuke the devourer. We rebuke the antichrist spirit that is rising up in this hour. Father, we pray that your will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And Lord, finally, we pray for Europe and we pray for Britain as it makes its way out of the European Union. Father, we pray for the church for strength in this hour. We pray for boldness and we pray for hearts to be open and attuned to your Holy Spirit. And Lord, we pray for France and we pray for Holland too during this time in Jesus mighty name in Jesus mighty name we pray amen amen yesterday's prophecies today's news this from the Washington Post Trump said he'll totally destroy the Johnson amendment in his address at the national prayer breakfast this morning President Trump made one clear policy declaration, I will get rid of and totally destroy the Johnson Amendment. Wow, friends. Now, I wrote about the Johnson Amendment in my book, Trumpet Blast Warning. Here's what I wrote. In 1954, Senator Lyndon B. Johnson, who later became president, added churches to the IRS tax code 501c3. This was part of his political agenda to silence the church from having any significant influence in shaping public policy. It was billed as a favour to the church, but in reality, it was a weapon to silence it, and it worked. Certain restrictions are placed on a church in order to claim tax deductions on tithes and offerings. This is why the church refuses to take a stand against the rising tyranny and unconstitutional actions of Washington today. If they do, they lose their tax deduction. They have been muzzled from expressing any political convictions. Think about it. When was the last time a mega church pastor publicly spoke out about the encroaching police state, the loss of liberty, or dared to question the Obama administration? This silence has deceived God's people into believing that everything is okay. Pastor Chuck Baldwin of Liberty Fellowship, Liberty Advocate and Presidential Nominee in the 2008 presidential elections has chosen for his church to opt out of the IRS tax deduction after having been under its control for many years. In a message to his congregation entitled The 501c3 Government Takeover of the Church, Baldwin stated, I didn't even realise the depth of the stranglehold that those tax codes hold over pastors and the churches themselves until not too long ago. The depth of intimidation and evil that is held over the necks of the heads of churches relative to the 501c3 tax-exempt status cannot be overstated. It's worse than you think it is, and it's worse than I thought it was. I'm just here to tell you, by living testimonial, that it is worse than you can possibly imagine. Now, friends, it's important to remember that Hitler silenced the church. That's what dictators have to do. They need to remove the obstacles out of their way. And you better believe it, friends, the church is the single most obstacle standing in the way of the new world order. If Trump manages to pull this off, the church in America will have its voice back for the first time in 60 years. Praise God. Okay, now this from the Daily Caller. In their own words, anti-Trump resistance leaders say they want to make America ungovernable. Behind the mass protests, choreographed chants and acts of violence, leaders of anti-Trump resistance efforts are communicating the same simple but dark message. They want to make America ungovernable for the President of the United States. These protesters say they will do whatever it takes to keep Trump from enacting his agenda and many of them have shown a willingness to destroy public property, assault law enforcement officers and inflict violence upon their fellow citizens.
And the article goes on. These people, friends, are not patriots. They are not freedom-loving people. They have been programmed by the system and are doing the bidding of the global elite. These are the godless minions of George Soros and the Antichrist spirit, who will willingly bow down and take the mark of the beast, as prophesied in scripture. These are the bullies, the liars, the cheaters and the haters of all that is good and proper. Well, friends, can you see what has been unleashed upon the earth? Now the liberal left are finally being exposed to the world for what they really are. OK, now this from Breitbart. Refuse fascism group behind Berkeley riot received $50,000 from George Soros. One of the far left anti-fascist groups behind last week's riot in Berkeley, Refuse Fascism, received $50,000 from a group backed by socialist billionaire George Soros, according to the Daily Caller. The Alliance for Global Justice, which is funded by the George Soros-backed Tides Foundation, reportedly donated $50,000 to fund Refuse Fascism, which openly brags about using violence to shut down conservative and libertarian speech. Oh my goodness, friends, it's incredible, isn't it? Refuse Fascism. Can you believe the lie just in the title right there? This is fascism, friends. This is what this is. Friends, George Soros should be arrested for his crimes against America and the world. But at the end of the day, friends, unless he repents, God will ultimately be his terrifying judge. Music for your life with Eternal Radio. Well, friends, here we are so soon at the end of another broadcast. Jesus left us with his peace. He tells us that in John 14, 27, he says, My peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. So then, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Friends, the peace that Jesus has left with us is not natural. It is supernatural and flowing from his secret dwelling place. Jesus told us in advance that we would experience tribulation, but that in him we would have this peace. We can read that in John 14 verse 1. Jesus says to you today, take courage for I have overcome the world. Oh friend, I urge you today to go into the secret place and to shut yourself off from all the noise and from all the clamour of this crazy world and allow the peace of God that surpasses all understanding to guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus your Lord. Hallelujah. Friend, shall we pray together right now? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father God, I thank you for your loving kindness towards us. I thank you, Father, that you have left your peace with us, Lord Jesus, that you didn't leave us alone. And Father God, I'm praying for everyone out there who is listening to this broadcast today, Father, that they would know your peace in this hour. Thank you, Father, that we can run into your wonderful place of protection, Father. We can run into your God bunker, Lord Jesus, and we can hide under the shadow of your almighty wings. Thank you, Father, for your peace. Thank you, it's not of this world, Lord, and that it's a heavenly supernatural peace. And I thank you, Father, that it surpasses all understanding, that no matter what is going on around us, Father, your wonderful peace can come upon us. And I pray that right now, Lord Jesus, for everyone listening, Lord Jesus, that they would know your peace in this hour. In Jesus' mighty, mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you, friends. God bless you. And have a great week. In the eye of the storm, you remain in control. And in the middle of the war, you guard my soul. The views expressed in this production may not necessarily be those of Eternal Radio. Eternal Radio. The preceding program was made possible by kind donations from the listeners to Eternal Radio, for which we are very grateful. 
It takes a great deal of time and resources to prepare, produce, record, and broadcast our programs to listeners in over 60 countries around the world. Our potential audience is much larger, and Eternal Radio can now be heard all around the world, online, on tablet, on smartphone, and on TV. If you would like to help us continue broadcasting sounds to energize your faith, together with the message of God's love for all mankind around the world, please prayerfully consider making a donation. From your mobile phone, simply text ELCM02, followed by your donation preference of £3, £5 or £10 to 70070. Thank you for listening.